So there's this recipe going around. It is viral on TikTok where you take some pasta and then you bake some tomatoes and feta cheese in the oven, mix them together, and it makes this delicious dish. You guys are all sending me messages. I've got a couple comments on past videos asking me to make it. So that's what I'm going to do today. Hey guys, if you are new, my name is Vanessa and I am bringing you along in the kitchen. Like I already mentioned, we are going to make that viral TikTok pasta dish. However, I'm not gonna use my oven. I'm gonna go ahead and try to recreate it in my Instant Pot because I love my Instant Pot. Now, if you guys do not know what the recipe is and you don't own an Instant Pot, I will leave the directions listed out in the description box just in case you still want to try it out. But I'm gonna bring you guys along with me in my kitchen today using my Instant Pot to make this baked feta pasta. So if you guys love using your Instant Pot or just being in your kitchen and whipping up something super simple but yet still delicious go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up subscribe and let's go ahead and jump right into it so here's the three main ingredients that everybody has been raving about so I just went ahead and picked up some penne noodles now this is a 16 ounce box I'm only going to use about 12 ounces and then I've got some cherry tomatoes here I'm not going to use this whole thing I think this was like a pound and a half and you only need about a pound of tomatoes and then eight ounces of feta cheese now my stores I do live in Texas and we are not yet fully stocked back up from our historic winter storm that we recently went through so I had a hard time finding feta cheese I actually had to go to a couple stores and Target ended up being uh, the winner where I got these three items so all they had was the crumbled and the four ounces so I've got two packages of that but it is still going to work then we are going to season it up a little bit I'm going to use some olive oil salt pepper I do have two cups of water here I might need three cups but you guys are going to come along with me and I'll let you know if I need another cup or not we just want to make sure that our pasta is completely covered in the liquid so it cooks properly in our instant pot and then I've got some garlic here this is three cloves that I minced up they do look like they're on the smaller side I thought about adding another one but I was already done so feel free if you guys love garlic add more the more the merrier you know and then I've got about a quarter cup of chopped basil right here and I do have a little extra basil for topping as well so I'm gonna go ahead and, and set you guys up and we're gonna start layering our ingredients in here you do not need to cut the tomatoes at all so not a whole lot of prep just the basil and the garlic if you already have minced garlic that takes that extra step out as well so let's go ahead and layer everything on our instant pot and see if we can re recreate this dish without using our oven all right so I'm going to take the lid off my instant pot if you guys have a version with these nifty pot holders on the side definitely utilize them it helps out a lot in the kitchen I'm gonna go ahead and take my oil. I'm using olive oil. You can use avocado oil, uh, whatever kind of oil you want. And I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle it on the bottom or pour it on the bottom about two tablespoons. This is gonna help the tomatoes cook up and pop and you know, kind of like when you're putting them in the oven and they get roasted, the tomatoes being on the bottom, it's gonna help them do that. So I'm just gonna put a single layer of tomatoes on the bottom of my Instant Pot. I did go ahead and pre-rinse these earlier since I did just pick them up from the store, so they are nice and ready. Now I'm going to layer in my pasta, and again, this was a 16 ounce package. I do not need that much. I only need about 12 ounces, so I'm gonna put almost the entire box. I think I'm gonna leave that much in there, so that's good. I'm just gonna spread this out and make sure it is pretty even in here. Now I'm going to pour in my water. So I'm starting with two cups because I don't want to have too much water. And yeah, that is not quite enough. I'm going to add another cup. And that seems about right. Like I said, I don't want too much. I just want enough to cover my pasta. So I'm going to go ahead and push it down a little bit. Mm, I'm going to add a little bit more water. I do have a six quart. So if you have a three quart, you could half this recipe. This size would, would work in an eight quart as well. So this is gonna be, oh, not all of that. So three and a half cups of water. 
With most Instant Pot recipes, you only need one cup of liquid to get your pot to come to pressure. But cooking pasta in your pot is a whole nother story. You just wanna make sure that there's enough for the pasta to absorb. So a good rule of thumb is just enough to cover your pasta. I'm going to season this with a sprinkle of salt and pepper. You can always go a little lighter when it's cooking and just add more after if you want. I'm gonna add in my basil. Oh, I love the smell of basil. Okay, and now I'm going to add in my garlic. Just gonna kinda try to get it around. And like I mentioned, if you are a huge fan of garlic, go ahead and add more. Okay, we are not done with the tomatoes. I am going to add some more on top. That way these are on top of the liquid. So we've got some on the bottom that are gonna to touch that heat of the pot. And then we've got some on top. I probably used a little more tomatoes than I needed, but I love roasted tomatoes. So I definitely went a little more heavy on the tomatoes, but like I was saying, I wanted to have some on top as well. So they are nice and steamed up. And then on top of that, our feta cheese is just going to go on the very top. Okay. That is all of our ingredients. You can go ahead and close your pot. Make sure it is sealing, not venting, or your Instant Pot will not come to pressure. I've got my lid on, but I guess it helps to have your Instant Pot plugged in, right? All right, this one does not take long at all. I am actually making it for lunch for my oldest daughter and myself. So all I need to do with the model that I have, the Instant Pot Duo, I need to get it on pressure cook. Make sure it is on high pressure. And I only need it to cook for four minutes. Once that four minutes is up, it is gonna take a little bit longer because the pot has to come to pressure. If you are new to a pressure cooker, it's not just the four minute cook time. Your pot needs a few minutes. Normally it's between five and 10. It depends on how full your pot is, but it needs those minutes to come to pressure. And then the time that you set it to cook will come on. It'll count down from four minutes and I'm going to do a quick release, which means I'm not going to let it sit at all. This little tab or button over here is gonna be popped up and I'm going to turn my knob from sealing to venting and it's going to release all the steam. Once the steam is all gone, that little knob will pop back down. I will then be able to open the lid. It is locked when it is there's steam inside here. That's an excellent safety feature. So I'll be able to open my lid at that point and check our little baked, but not baked, pressurized um, feta, pasta dish. Okay, timer is up. So I am gonna go ahead and release the pressure. You can see that the knob is up, which means my Instant Pot did come to pressure. And the pressure has all released, so you can safely open your pot. Look at those tomatoes, it smells so good. All right, so as you can see, there is a little bit of a liquid still in here and we don't want it to be that liquidy. So I'm gonna go ahead and give everything a stir and wait just a couple minutes and see if that thickens at all now that the pot is open and the steam has been released. Most of the time it does thicken up, but if it doesn't thicken, then you can go ahead and drain some of this extra liquid. It's not gonna hurt your dish at all. And that's it. Whether you decide to keep the leak liquid, drain it, you could also put your Instant Pot on a saute, add a little cornstarch slurry, and thicken up your liquid that way if you wanted to keep that in there for just an extra sauce. But this is just so nice and light. It didn't take any time at all in the Instant Pot. Really just a dump and go, and super delicious. A quick lunch option or side to dinner, maybe with some grilled chicken. I can definitely see why this recipe has been getting all the hype lately. So I am definitely so glad that you guys reached out to me and wanted me to recreate this recipe and share it with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it, whether you try it in your Instant Pot pressure cooker or you go ahead and make it the viral way in your oven. Again, I will have that recipe written out in the description box just in case you wanna try it out the, I guess, not really old fashioned way, but the regular way. But 
I wanted to share with you guys the Instant Pot version, so I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me for just a little bit in the kitchen. I'm gonna go ahead and bowl some out for my daughter. We're gonna eat some lunch. I hope you guys are having a fantastic middle of the week, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.